Quebec, Canada, fighting Troy the Destroyer Dorsey. 12 rounds for the World Super Lightweight Championship. What are you going to do now as far as kickboxing? First, I want to thank God. Say hello to my wife, Shelly and Kendra. Happy birthday, Shane. And thank all of my instructors and students at my school. Now, pick up kickboxing and boxing both again and go out there world time. Congratulations. Okay, thank you. Do you want to tell me about this picture that's behind us? I know it's not the whole thing, but what is it? It's uh, when I fought Jorge Paz for the... I fought him twice. Was this the first time you fought him or second time? Uh, that's what I'm thinking. This is the first time. How old do you think you were in that photo? Uh, 14. 14? No. <laughs> no. It was in 1990, so I was about... So in 1990, I was born in 62. 28 years old. Wow. Um, so I, was, I guess I was 27 because uh, my birthday hadn't been. How did that first fight go? Uh, it went it went good for me. I had a good showing. Uh, I was on on Jorge Paz the whole time. I had him on the ropes. Not the whole time, but I can guarantee you can go back and watch it. And I would say at least 70% of the time he's on the ropes. Could have been 80, 85% of the time he's on the ropes. And I'm just pounding him. He's just on the ropes and he's just doing stuff and surviving through it. And he's really a tough fighter. So I wasn't, uh, I wasn't punching him real hard when I should have been punching him hard. I was, I was trying to do bunches of punches. So, but like I said, he's, he's on the ropes the whole time. I outpointed him and then they raised his hand in a split decision win. So he won? He won the fight. Do you think that was, so that was fair? This, uh, no. no. <laughs> so February 4th is when I fought him, 1990, 1989. He was Boxing Fighter of the Year. Not in my division, but in all the boxers in the world. He was, in, uh, he was named Boxing Fighter or boxing, Boxer of the Year for the previous year, 1989. Then I fought him February uh, 1990. He was, he was the, I may have said that incorrectly, he was the fighter of the year in all of boxing in 1989. And then in February I fought him, so two months later after that, there's no way I could have been. I had something like 15, 16, 17 fights. I had a couple of losses uh, due to cuts. I had a, uh, two or three draws and not really many wins at all. So for me to beat him, I would have had to knock him out because it was all the odds. I was uh, right. like 10 to 15 to one in, uh, on the betting mm -hmm. in Las Vegas. And we fought at the Las Vegas Hilton. And uh, it, would have, it would have been no good for, him, for, for me to win. So everything was stacked against me, but that's just the way it goes. Uh, you, you were the go, underdog in this. I was the underdog. Blake, did you find... So, yeah, it was Sunday, February 4th, 1990. Yes. That's right. Las Vegas Hilton. Uh, your record at the time was 11-2-1 with eight knockouts. So yeah. you were 22 in that. Uh, Wait, no. I can't do that. <laughs> okay, so... Six, yeah, 28, yeah. I saw the two from 62. Right. Just, just ignore what I said. Yes, it. yeah. He, uh, Jorge was 32, 2, and 2, 25 knockouts. Yes. Were you nervous going into that fight? Uh, yes, I was nervous. I was, uh, 
I was I was taught though to when you you train hard and you do all you can in the in the in your training you get ready you run you bicycle you I did both bicycle and running uh, just depended on the weather I guess outside but uh, I was riding by a bicycle with him and then training and sparring and fighting and you put all that time and effort into preparation and then you get in there and you do the job and then they raise the other guy's hand but that's uh that's that's kind of, that's kind of like life is uh bryce you've never had a boxing match but have you ever felt like you lost oh yeah and i'm sure i could ask anybody that question if they were honest we all feel like we lose sometimes have you ever felt like you lost but you won i think the older i've gotten um i've been able to um be more content in my losses you know find the positive out of that right but i think it's hard if you're whether you're young or you're new at something it's just it's hard to see that side of it yes and you're yes. pretty new at it at that point weren't you as far as the that world of boxing yes and everything. yes i was but i felt like i won the fight and i guess i said that 85 times but uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, we all know now <laughs> you really were the one who won the fight so. that, did i tell you that <laughs> yes, okay you did. <laughs> i want to make sure that you know anyways uh it was it was highly protested and I still get I still get uh, fan mail in the mail, and right. and they say you won that fight with Jorge Paez. Can you bring your well, fan mail up here one time? No, it's gonna be hard to find it, but I can. <laughs> you I, have it somewhere. I can try. Yes. You can try looking yes. for it. I think it's in my attic. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, would you say those were ever setbacks in your career, or do you think they pushed you more to? Uh, no, I don't think it was a setback. It was uh, people saw and they saw the effort that I that I was fighting with and uh, the type of fighter that I am. That they it opened doors, I think, for for me in the future. And then I fought in February fourth, March, April. I think it was April eighth. I fought Bernardo Pinango, a former world title, a former world champion. I knocked him out in the seventh round. And then I said, Jorge Paz, you are a coward if you don't fight me again, if you don't give me a rematch. What do you want to say to Paz? I want to say, let's get back in the ring and do it again. They offered, uh, they offered him the fight for this time, and uh, he passed it up. I wanted it. The TV people want Everybody wants it except Paz. He's a coward if he don't get back in there with me and do it. He's not a true champion. You know, we've talked about Troy, um, your friends, your family, your students, how much they mean to you, but we've never really gone into your fans like what was your fan base like you know through all the stages of your career what was that like for you oh uh it's very encouraging to get when you get fan mail it's encouraging it's like wow somebody there are some people that know about me or and i have some true fans that saw me through because i wasn't a i wasn't a really pretty fighter because most of my fights were one on the inside and uh lots of banging lots of punches and it's it really is nice to know that people care and people are wanting to support you and want your autograph. Yes, ma'am. It's something else. Would you ever say, looking back at it now, was there times you let it get to your head, or do you, would you say you always kept yourself grounded? Oh, well, I always keep it. I always let it go to my head. I'm superhero. I'm <laughs> I'm way above everybody else. No, it's it's uh, there are times for sure when I have. Uh, I'm at a restaurant, someone walk up to me, hey, are you Troy Dorsey? And then sometimes the ego kicks in. Most of the time I'm able to control, but I know the one time was my wife and I were eating at a restaurant, a Mexican, Mexican food restaurant, and I, uh, someone, someone said something to me, and all of a sudden, so right, you can see how I'm talking now. It's pretty embarrassing. Then as soon as they started talking, oh, yes. Yeah, my my pride just took over, and I just said yes, and I. It was very, very uh, ugly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to, to 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 me to flex my muscles. I I didn't do this, but on the inside, that's what I was doing, and I was, my ego ran off. So I try to be. I try. I try hard to be humble. I say try hard. I, it should just be natural, but, but uh. It was it, it was difficult at times when people would run at, uh, run up to me and when I'm in the ring and or I, it's just been 
amazing trip that God blessed me, amazing journey that, that God blessed me with to be able to fight for world titles and fight uh, all around the world. Well, I never went to Japan, but I went to Europe eight times and I fought a bunch all around America and I fought in Mexico and uh, I got to go to Canada with one of my friends as a kickboxer. He was fighting and I didn't fight in the car, but I was up there helping him, Ishmael Robles. So, so your question was? Well, you answered it as far as, you know, the entirety of, of your career, you know, about the letting it get to your head. But, you know, when you were in your prime, like, was that ever, was that how you were? Or did no. you do? No, I, I don't want to, like, brag on me not bragging or not being a big head or not having a big ego. But, you know, those things jump into your head and, and I'm sure maybe I've hurt some feelings. I know I hurt my wife's feelings when I, she was disappointed to see that. I'll never forget that time when, when someone said, are you Troy Dorsey? And I just, all of a sudden, I was Mr. Hotshot. When God made us all the same, we're all the same. And, it, and it's, it's ugly when, when, uh, when I see, when I, I'll just say for me, it was ugly when I, I as I recall, doing it. Being, having an ego, letting my, le letting my, my, I'm not even sure how you say it. Just being a big shot. What it's, was Leslie's reaction to that? She didn't react until we left. Mm -hmm. And then she said, Troy, what was that? So my wife keeps me in line more than one way. More, in more than one, one way. <laughs> yeah. But she's been there with me through all these fights and on my career, my martial arts career. And she's always been there with me. She's been with me more than anybody else has. I met her in 1982. Here we are 41 years later and we're still together and she's still putting up with me. And uh, th thanks for reminding me. My name is Troy Dorsey. We offer martial arts and karate training and fitness kickboxing training. Our karate program is for men, women, and children of all ages. From four and a half, we even have a student that's 91 years old. Also, we teach fitness kickboxing. It's a one hour non-contact class of punching and kicking a bag because hitting a bag is like weightlifting to help strengthen and tone your muscles. Give us a call at 817-477-5523. Come in and see us today and start your martial arts experience with us now. Welcome back, Destroyers, to If the Gloves Could Talk. I'm your host, Bryce George, and here with me today and every week on the show is Mr. Troy Dorsey. And Troy, we've got a really special guest ahead of us today, introducing Ms. Mr. Ishmael Robles, owner of Martial Arts America in Galveston, Texas. Ishmael, yes. how are you doing? I'm doing great, thank you. Thank you for the invitation. Yes, thank you so much for being on the show today. Troy, are you excited to oh, interview? Yes. It's been one of my great friends and a, a martial arts legend. And yeah, I've just been fortunate to be able to meet him and train with him and uh, have him as a friend. He, he's an amazing man. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. It's okay. Well, now, yes, sir, Ishmael. Well, now I'm excited because I get to meet him, get to interview yeah. him, and get to learn about all the great things Troy has told me, but now hear it from you. So, um, Ishmael, if you can first tell us a little bit about yourself, you know, sure. who are you? Hi, <laughs> I'm from Galveston, Texas. I was born and raised here in Galveston and uh, went to, graduated from Ball High School in 1969, a long time ago. And I went to college at Lamar University and got a degree in political science. Uh, started boxing when I was eight years old. It was a pretty good little boxer. I only had about 20 or 30 fights, but a lot of them were like, some some I'd win because it would all, I'd be the only one in the division. But I had some good fights. So it taught me something, it taught me that I wanted to be a fighter. 
And then a, a friend of mine asked me to come over to watch a karate demonstration. His name was Jesse Benavides. And I went over to watch it and I was just totally amazed at what they were able to do and the kicking aspect. So I started kickboxing. And uh, I mean, karate, I got my black belt. I went, I trained in, in karate at, at Lamar University with Fred Simon. And then I got my black belt under the USKA. And uh, it was it was quite a journey. I started fighting in karate tournaments and did pretty well and wasn't afraid to get hit because I've been boxing so long. And uh, from there, I, I had a dear, dear friend named Demetrius Savannah who called me when I was grad, when, when uh, right when I was going to get out of college. He called me and said they were putting together a kickboxing team and they, he wanted me to be the flyweight. So I jumped on that as quickly as I could. And we became, we had a great team. We had a great team. It was uh, the Fort Worth Texans. And we fought the number one team in the, in, in the world, the LA Stars. And we beat them five out of six fights. The only guy that lost was Greek. And he had a had a heck of a fight with a guy named Benny Urquides, probably the best pound for pound fighter of all time. And uh, Greek barely lost. And But I think Greek would have gotten him the second time around. But it was it was not destined to because he got can killed. You, can you mention track. a couple of other names that are on the your team? On the team, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Roy Kerbin was our light heavyweight. Phil Wallman was our middleweight. Ray McCallum was our uh, uh, welterweight. The Greek was a lightweight, and I was the uh, uh, the flyweight. Wow! And George George Bray was the heavyweight. Okay. So that was our whole team. Yeah. And we've had Mr. Kerbin on the show, and yeah. we are going to be getting Mr. McCallum on the show as well. So right. it's just crazy how everybody knows everybody in yeah. you know <laughs> this world so and now I'm so, and i'm so fortunate because i get to sit, be around all these champions like ishmael and raymond and well George coming Bray. from a champion himself I'm <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so ishmael how many world titles do you currently have i i have one world title and i have two u.s titles i won the pk uh u.s title and uh, I'll tell you what, I've got it down here. I've got He's the, like, I, I got I won my the notes. PKA US title in 1982, and I won the uh, kick world title February the 5th, 1983, and I won the uh, WK title in 1981. Wow. So I have one, one world title and two U.S. titles. And, and how... uh, I, was, I was one of the great, a good point fighter. I, I, I was okay. uh, rated in the top 10 in the nation in point karate because that's what I was telling Troy. I fought five fights. That I got my 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 first round knockouts in, but it was over almost a three year period because I was only fighting once or twice a year because I was doing so many karate tournaments. Mm -hmm. And how did Troy come into the picture? How did the two of y'all meet? I had a trainer named Jim Cho. He still okay. is. He, I mean, he's a dear friend. And uh, Troy was one of his students, one of his black belts. And I was just so fortunate because you know what made me my, the fighter that I was was the competition that I had, the, the, the training partners. Who can talk about uh, a world champion boxer and kickboxer as a sparring partner? And then Cliff Thomas was a five-time world champion, you know? And then the, the great Demetrius Savannah. Those were my three primary uh, uh, partners in boxing and kickboxing. So, gosh, I, I, I it was... Oh, and then every once in a while I'd fight Ray McCallum and Billy Jackson. So <laughs> that wasn't yeah. fun either. But, yeah. <laughs> but just those guys, just to speak for those guys. Oh my gosh. They yeah. Was, they would. What, oh. what, what, a, what a, what a tough bunch of, uh, Oh my gosh. Men. If you could survive that, you could survive anything. Exactly. <laughs> so when you, when you, when you train with great people like that, you have no yep. choice. You have no, I mean, mm -hmm. But to, but to win, I, I say no choice. It's not it's not a choice. It's just when you get great turning like that, great sparring partners like that, it just it pays off. It paid off. Well, it's the same thing they say about success. You know, you want to surround yourself with successful, hardworking people, exactly. and if you surround yourself with people who don't have that same work ethic, it right. affects you. So. It makes sense how you know you and Troy have done so well for yourselves and. Troy, do you remember, you know, getting to know Ishmael and, you know, when he was training under Mr. Choate? Well, I was I was a little boy when I first saw him, and he was uh, promoting his tournament in Galveston. How many years did you do that tournament? Oh, I did it for almost 20 years. Yeah. I think it started in 75. Okay. Wow. So, yeah, I see, I see this. Ishmael, you are... 72 or 71? 70, 72, yeah. 72. In December, you'll be 73. Or you just turned. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to yes, speed it up. Yeah. But <laughs> anyways, this, he is amazing. He still teaches 
He has his own school. He still spars. He still works out. He still, uh, he's, an, he's an amazing uh, example to what a martial artist is. He wow. just continues to, to take care of his body and uh, do the martial arts and spread the mm -hmm. spread uh, spread martial arts to so many people. They're in Galveston. He's been there for fifty something years, I believe. Right? I'll, in next next month will be forty nine years in business. Forty nine wow. years. Yeah, I was off a year. <laughs> <laughs> That's still that, very that, impressive, that, though. That is impressive. There are people that aren't in business. They have a difficult time being in business for four or nine years much less 49 years. Yeah. Great job. Right. And I do have to ask Ishmael, you are a grandmaster. So what does that mean to yeah. be a grandmaster? How, what is involved with becoming one and how long does that take? Well, Troy and I tested under the same uh, gentleman who was a, we called him Supreme Grandmaster, June Reed. <laughs> and uh, June Reed was an, an amazing man. He, he passed several, several years ago. But uh, I guess just taking on the responsibility of being someone who may be guys, they're probably better, as good or better than me. But it's always been good to have some of them call me and talk to me and get my advice on different type things. And I've sat in on, on black belt tests for other seniors that I, who I know and maybe some, some I didn't know. But it was really nice. It's a good, it's a good fraternity that we have, particularly in Texas. And you know, our great grandmasters are people like Roy Kerbin. I mean, to me, Roy is at the, at the very top uh, uh, of everything, you know. Um, and there's others that are out there. Alan Steen, oh my gosh, I saw Alan Steen. He, he was, he's over Roy Kerbin, he promoted Roy Kerbin. Wow. So Alan, Master Steen is just, oh, I just look up to him so much. We got a chance to see him, Troy and I did in Houston. Yeah, it's just, uh, what was that? Back in the summer, right? Yeah. Your last summer, yes sir. Yeah. Hi, I'm Andrea, Andy Mac Candy Shack. We have over 1,600 different types of candy. We have everything from Taffy Town Taffy. We carry almost 100 different flavors. We have the old school bazooka gum. And yes, they do still have the jokes in them. We have everything from Mexican candy, Japanese candy, and I love these lollipops. They are so fun. Plus, we do special things like we custom make baskets. We have so many jelly bellies, it'll blow your mind. And just so you know, not only do we carry local items like our Dublin sodas, we carry Wild Bill sodas which is a veteran-owned, veteran-run company. Be sure and come see us down at Andy Mac Candy Shack. Ishmael, you've had some students go on to be pretty successful. Can you tell yes. us who those students are and what mm -hmm. their accolades look like? Yeah. Regina Thompson started with me as a kid, and she was small, and then she, she was a good little fighter, and we would, you know, beat on her. We, we were real competitive back then. And we would compete with her, but she rose to the top. She she was she won like about fifteen or twenty world titles with the NBL, and she traveled uh, worldwide. They took her. She was on national teams and world world ranked teams that traveled all over the world. Uh, Al Garza, just a tremendous fighter, tre tremendous point fighter, forms competition, everything, and uh, now very very successful uh, martial. Uh, art studio owner. He owns three studios in the Houston area, around, up the street from me. Uh, and uh, my brother, my Fernando, was was rated in the in the top ten in 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 lightweights for many years. So he did very very well too. So those were the, about the only real top. I had good guys that went to the uh, got the Golden Greek and the AOK, the Benavides girls, and a couple of other students that I promoted. So I've done pre I've done pretty well as far as students that have gone on to do really good things. Troy, did you know of any of these students before? Regina had, you said 33? She had about wins. 30 world titles with the NBL. Wow. That was, yeah, she, she was a great, she still is a great fighter. I think she still trains teams and stuff. I haven't seen her in a while. Wow, did yeah. you know of these fighters before? Yeah, I yeah, heard of everyone, every one of them, yes. Yeah, they're all, all great, great uh, martial artists. And they, yes. they uh, Mr. Mr. Robus is the, is the 
pointed them in the right direction and trained them the right way and got them started and and now look where they are yes that's great ishmael you have a, an instructor a personal instructor that has definitely influenced your system of teaching at your school and it's influenced you as a fighter can you tell us a little bit about him oh okay who are we talking about um it is June Ree or Alan Steve? I believe June Ree. Yeah. Oh, June Ree. Yeah. Oh, June Ree. June Ree is known as the father of American Taekwondo. He was the first to actually introduce a Taekwondo system into the United States. He started off at San Marcos, going to college, Southwest Texas, and then he transferred to University of Texas in Austin. That's where he promoted Alan Steen and Pat Burleson, and then he moved to Washington D.C. and that's where he was really well known. And he he's produced some of the greatest. Uh, karate fighters and kickboxers of all time. Uh, and he was a very knowledgeable man and a great businessman. He was the first person that I remember going to see that taught us how to actually do business in the martial arts and how to actually make money. And I was very, very impressed with him. And I asked him if, if he, he would do me the honor of accepting me as a student. And I didn't think he would, but he did. So we became dear friends and I could call him and talk with him anytime I wanted to. He influenced, he was such an influencer, he taught on cap uh, at the Capitol uh, in D.C. He had, uh, we. I went up to a tournament there one year and he had the Democrats versus Republicans at karate team matches. <laughs> so it was amazing to see the influence that he had in D.C. So I, I was just privileged to know him and, and be so close with him. So that's really great, Ishmael. And you've also impacted a lot of students at your own school and I'm going to assume this is your creed, knowledge in the mind, honesty in the heart, and strength in the body. What does that mean to you? That's the Jun Ri creed. Okay. Jun Ri, I, when I, I followed him, he, I took him on as an instructor, gosh, more than about 25 years ago. And that was the, 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 the student creed for the Jun Ri Institutes. And uh, the thing about, the, the great thing about Master Ri, and this is something I'm very proud of, is the fact that he introduced us into, and a lot of schools do it now where they'll have special days for kids that do really well in school, make honor roll or, or honorable mention or something like that. Well, I don't think there's a karate school, I'm gonna say this, in the world that can match the records. Since 2010, we've had six valedictorians and three salutatorians wow. that were black belts. Wow. Our black belts from, from uh, Martial Arts America. So that's nine since 2010 that are one or two in high schools here. So that, that, that that's, I got that from him. I really pumped up my educational aspects of my kids. I said, you gotta do well in school. It's not, a, it's not only being a fighter, it's being smart. Right. And so we, we were able to get the, these kids motivated enough. They give us a lot of credit for that. And that, that makes me feel very, I mean, it's great to be a good fighter, but it's great to be knowledgeable. And I think that's so important because yeah. a lot of the lessons that the, you learn in school and, you know, martial arts do intertwine of the discipline, of the commitment, and uh, that just goes to show you're really um, growing successful students. And like we talked, spoken with Troy before, not every student is a kid. You know, you've got uh, students right. of all ages, sure. but it's just great knowing that you're really raising some great leaders out there. So, you know, congrats to you on that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, my last question, which is an important question for you, Ishmael. Can you tell us about the Joe Lewis Eternal Warrior Award? That's something that uh, uh, Joe Corley out of Atlanta has put together over the last maybe 15, 20 years. It's, it's, it's been a, a while. I had a chance to, I know Joe Corley, he was the, he's the president of the Pro Professional Karate Association. Very well-known fighter back in the day, promoter of the Battle of Atlanta, and then the originator of the PKA. And Joe Lewis was our first heavyweight world champion, recognized world champion. And Joe Lewis was a great guy. I love Joe Lewis. I, he he could make me every picture I've got with him. I'm laughing because he, he's so <laughs> he was so funny. You know, we, we we lost him several years ago, but uh, he was the epitome of what Joe Corley thought was a, a a true champion. And so he decided to honor Joe Lewis by doing calling it the Eternal Warrior Award. 
and 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 it's got a. It's a funny thing about this is on the on the uh, uh, on the poster that 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 you're were presented. It's got a line on there. It's got uh, something by gentleman Jim Corbett, and and it, it keeps talking about fight one more round, fight more no, one more round. No matter how tired, how bloody you are, or whatever, fight one more round, and that's the the goal of the uh, of the phrase. And I had a young girl that was going to medical school here one year, was taking credit from me. She said, you know what? I'm related to him. I said, you are? She said, yeah, gentleman Jim Corbett. So that's that's the what's on, on the award for everyone. And Troy and I got it together and it was wonderful to be there with him and a lot of other greats. You know, it's always good to be recognized, you know, as we, as we get older like me, <laughs> you know, it's good, good to get accolades, you know, it's all I can get in now, you know, is accolades, so that's good. So Troy, I didn't know you got that same award as well. Well, he just reminded me. <laughs> I guess he didn't know either. <laughs> Thanks for the reminder. So yeah, it's, 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 it's an amazing award, and yeah, just to keep on, keep on, keeping on, and that's what we're doing. I love it. Well, Troy, is there anything else you'd like to ask our guest Ishmael today? Uh, well, I just want to thank Ishmael for for working with me when I was kickboxing. So we we did lots of training together for that fight you talked about in St. Louis, and then until you retired, we just kept on getting yep. together with uh, Mr. Choke. And he would train us and uh, get us in the great, great shape, and that's how we, without without help. Some people think that they, oh. that uh, like like I can say, okay, uh, I'm Troy Dorsey, and I did it all my all by myself. I'm a liar if I say that. So I had Jim Choate, I had great sparring partners like Ishmael, and sometimes sparring partners can be like just people that you beat on, but that wasn't the way it was with Ishmael. It was uh, it, it was keeping up with him and uh, pushing and uh, just just learning a lot when I was sparring him. It was all it was all he always took me to school. So <laughs> <laughs> you took me to school too, buddy. <laughs> so I learned a lot sparring uh, and working with with Ishmael. So it was great. And Jim Choate helped out a lot too. So yeah, I wouldn't be where I was if it wasn't for Jim Choate, where, where I am right now. So. I started, I started martial arts right across the street. Jim Choate had that school in 1974. And here we are in the, in the building that I bought in 99 and sold it a couple of years ago. And Yeah, in. Ishmael, you may not know that. This is Troy's old studio that we're in right now. And oh, really? uh, that is how this whole thing came to be. Um, oh, we, really? are, we do video production, podcast space, and events oh, wow. uh, at 063 Studios. But this is the historic and original Troy Dorsey Karate School. Wow. Room. So, yeah. yeah, there's a lot of history. Um, yeah. The 063 Studios team just loves Troy to death. And this is a really fun project we've gotten to work on with him. So it's kind of cool getting to see what is still happening inside this building. I feel like we're still keeping Troy's legacy, you know, going in here and by doing this podcast. and. Cool. We appreciate you so much for sure. joining us today. Thank you. Nice to meet you. And Troy, I love you, buddy. I love you too, Ishmael. Thank you so much for joining us. And uh, yeah. have a God-blessed day, sir. Thank you. You too. You I too. love you. We All right. Bye-bye. All right. Thank you, guys. We'll be right back on If the Gloves Could Talk.